Thanks again to Jeffrey for joining us now. Continue our look back at the weekend of darts and over to the WDF where it was the Dutch Open at the weekend. And Jano Bottenberg taking out what many could see as a potential checkout of the year, the 1 3 1 to win the men's singles title to beat Wesley Placia three sets to two in the final. And Bo Greaves regaining the ladies' title in Assen, beating Eileen de Graaf 5 1 in the final. What were your thoughts on the action? Uh, I didn't have many thoughts. Uh, I, I think this year, m- even more than any in the past, the Dutch Open was just lacking in relevance. And part of it was going up opposite of uh, the PDC Masters. But also part of it is just the fact that there, even the best players who don't have a tour card no longer feel the need to go play WDF events, uh, at least on the men's side. I mean, if you look, there were almost no players from the UK or anywhere else in the world other than Netherlands and its surrounding countries and the surrounding countries that decided to go and play that. Most of the people who made it to the deep stages are people who who I've never heard of. Okay, I've heard of the finalist, obviously. And Wesley Plessier, I think, is one of the best players who doesn't have a tour card. I, I, He was on my list of players I thought would win a tour card. I don't think I set him on the show, but he was on my list of people I was expecting to win a tour card. He didn't get it done. And he also didn't get it done in the final, despite having some chances. He very nearly went two sets to nil up. And I uh, I just don't think uh, Jano Bodenberg would have come back from that. Uh, but he also didn't play anywhere near his best in that final. I've heard of Bodenberg, but I didn't know anything about it. You know, you look at some of the other people who had deep runs, Christian Kist, Arshan Konterman, uh, Thomas Junghans, another uh, fairly good player. But none of them, actually all of them are fairly good players, but none of them played anywhere near their best. Jerry Hendricks, uh, friend of the pod. There, there are, like, there were some, but there were so many players in the deeper stages who I've never heard of. They weren't necessarily playing lights out darts to get there. Uh, It was the weakest field I could remember, and it just lacked in relevance. Uh, The women's side was a little bit different. Obviously, having Bo Greaves, the best female player in the world, helps. But you also had Aline de Graaf. You had Noah Lynn Van Leuven. You had uh, Lorraine Wynn Stanley and a few other of the top players there. I think that... That adds some credibility. I, I mean, I, I forgot to mention Kirsty Hutchinson, who was a finalist of the World Championship recently. So you had a lot of the best players, though not all of them in the women's game there. And it made it a legitimate tournament. And Bo Greaves obviously was always going to be difficult to beat. And again, she didn't play her best, but she didn't need to. She doesn't usually, unless Fallon Sherrick and occasionally Makuru Suzuki or Rihanna Sullivan are there playing their best. But she played all right, and she did play her best in the women's pairs in the uh, quarterfinal match against uh, de Graaf and Zilska, where she had quite possibly the most absurd leg you will have ever seen. Uh, playing with Joe Rolls, she kicked off with a 180 after Rolls scored 41. I-, I should add the pairs was a leg of 701. So she kicked off with a 180. Joe Rolls scored 41. Bo Greaves threw another 180. And Bo Greaves threw a third 180 of the leg to leave 79. 540 points and nine darts. Joe Rolls didn't take out the 79, but left top. Bo Greaves took it out first dart. What is that? You can do the math. That's 580 points in 10 darts. The only one that wasn't a triple 20 was a double 20. What an absurd leg. That's how good Bo Greaves is. And that's the big takeaway from the weekend. It's the only one that I think is worth taking away because the Dutch Open, it's a it's a fun event. I would love to go there one year. I'd love to go play in it one year. And I I think it's an event that the PDC should take over. I think the PDC could do a wonderful job staging that event, um, make, you know, giving the 128 tour card holders a buy out of the last 256, but otherwise making it a true open event like it is just with the best players in the world. It would be so much. It would be different in so many ways in the UK Open, but also just such a really interesting event with the best players there. But they're not there. And in the end, it's a great tournament, but it's not one that I went out of my way to watch. And even when I even when it was in my way, I wasn't watching it. Some good points there. And yeah, that's a, a cracking idea about the, the PDC tie and get those one to eight in there from the last two fifty six onwards, something I've not thought about before, but definitely a great idea. And certainly me and you, I think one year I've got to go and play the pairs and try and win a leg like I did at the weekend. But I'll, I'll give a shout out to 
one of our good friends of the show, John Thompson, he got in touch with us and said early contender for checkout of the year there and I had to go and watch the Dutch Open stream. I didn't have it on at the time, but that 1-3-1 one, one from Jano Bottenberg to win the title, the treble 17, two double tops to beat Wesley Plysia. It's going to be a contender, isn't it? I mean, it's probably not going to get the amount of interest that a, a big checkout's going to get at the World Championship at the end of the year at Ali Pali, but to win a title like that on a stage, it takes some doing. And Fiano, someone that only 22 years old, he is fast making a, a name for himself. He won through the qualifiers to get to Lakeside last year. He wins the Dutch Open, which has got him back to, to Lakeside this year. And uh, it, it's a good point you make about the lack of, I guess, names, star power in this men's field. And this is one of the first big events we've seen from the WDF in terms of that participation since Q School. And, and you look at some of the names that have gone on from the WDF, won their tour cards, the, the reigning Lakeside champion, Andy Barton, the runner-up, Chris Lamman, Yellow Class, and what was he, a semi-finalist as well. You know, there's a few names there, the bigger names, if you like, in that WDF system that aren't going to be there this year. So I think having some new players come to the scene, that the likes of Jano Bottenberg take a, a big finish like that, hopefully it is going to generate a bit more interest and we're going to see him start to, to make more strides this year and okay he doesn't have to play another event he's going to be in the world championship which might uh, affect how many events he does play in but if, if he does start to play a bit more of the tour now he could be someone that we see really make their mark and going to lakeside last year as an unknown player this year he's going to be someone that could well be a, a contender to win the title. And I want to mention some of the names that we haven't really heard from before. And you mentioned the, 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 the lack of big names that we saw. And I want to go to two of the beaten semi-finalists, Germany, Sascha Stoilemer and uh, a Dutchman, Jeremy Dirksen, two names that we've not come across before, but managed to make it to those semi-finals. And particularly uh, in Sascha's case, some of the wins that he managed to get beating Christian Kist, 5-4 in the quarterfinals, Jerry Hendricks, Bradley Rocha, a former Lakeside boys champion. So some eye-catching results for him. And as for Bo Greaves, yeah, what, what more is there to say? I'm glad that you mentioned those those three 180s in the pairs because that had slipped my mind. But I do remember seeing a, a clip of that over the weekend. And I think this is the first time we've seen her since she won Lakeside. I, I can't recall her playing anywhere else this year. And we know she didn't go to Q school, but to come back, do what she did in, in the pairs there, but also in the singles as well, dropping just two legs on the way to the final. 5-1 against Eileen de Graaf in the final and regaining the title that she'd lost to Eileen in the final 12 months ago. And it's the first of many titles you'd expect her to win this year in the ladies game, either in the WDF or when the Women's Series in the PDC comes back. And just lastly, speaking of that Women's Series, one of the last winners on that tour in 2023, Natalie Gilbert, made the semi-finals, which is a good run for her. And we know that she's got one eye, doesn't want to jinx it, but she is looking to try and qualify for that Women's World match play in the PDC. But the points from this weekend, it has pushed her up the rankings. Maybe there could be that first World Championship appearance at Lakeside. Maybe that could be on the cards for her as well this year.